Praise the Lord. Good to see all you guys today, tonight. Got a, got a, uh, had to help this little girl down the aisle and back over there and listening to some kids and it's good to hear little kids and activity and don't worry about them kids over there. I told her my mom would let me just draw pictures under all the pews. I don't know. Drew, drew some masterpieces under them pews. She's wondering why it's being so quiet. Then she's had to start worrying about it. Don't worry about that. We are a thriving, healthy church. All you guys are the church. And uh, it's great to see all you guys here. God's doing great things in Chelsea, Oklahoma. And every individual here. And it's a wonderful thing. You know, Brother Erickson talking about knocking and seeking. I've been studying some of that this week. And it's uh, just got to keep on asking God for stuff. Solomon, they said, ask for wisdom. James talks about wisdom. If you don't have wisdom, ask for it. He'll give it to you. Wisdom goes a long ways. There's a lot of things going on in this world that makes you wonder if anybody has any left. But, but they haven't been asking God for it because he'd give it to them. Praise the Lord. Well, let's all stand. We're going to take up an offering. Remember, we have the uh, Move the Mission. Is it Move the Mission offering Sunday? This Sunday. Don't forget about that. And like I say, there's an app, Tidely app. You can use that. It has all the categories on there if you need to use it. So if you forget, you don't really forget. You can do it later. Sometimes I pay tithes and offerings on Sunday nights before I go to bed and go, oh, yeah. So it's a great, marvelous uh, technology out there. It's not all bad technology. Some of it's good. It's a good tool. So praise the Lord. Let's all sing. God's good. He's worthy of our praise. Praise the Lord. It's Wednesday night. Doesn't matter. Anything can happen. I'm looking forward to seeing God fill somebody with the Spirit. Um, it's what a joy just to see their face as they enter into the kingdom. Praise the Lord. It's going to be exciting when it happens, and it's going to happen soon. It's the will of God. It's the will of God. Praise the Lord. So let's all sing unto the Lord. He's good. Just 
seated that first song had a little bit of some cajun jazz to it that's a good pep rally song for living for the lord Amen. looking forward to next sunday we'll see if Susie can give a lesson like she plays the piano no pressure Susie. no pressure at all I have my both my eyes on you uh it'll be good looking forward to that you know god wants everybody to participate in this kingdom and uh everybody's got something you love god you know, we want to hear what you got to say about it. And if you're not giving a lesson next week, you can always stand up and testify right now Hallelujah. about the goodness of God. Amen. If you want to, I don't know why you wouldn't want to. Praise the Lord. Anybody? Don't, yes.
Ya. Ya. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. That's good, yeah. That's right. You need to be weighed down with things like that. That's right. My problem with credit cards is I put stuff on it <laughs> faster than I take stuff off. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes, indeed. You know. Yes. It, it is all Him. No, that's not. A, there's no such thing. Yes. That's right. Yes, that's right. Yeah. 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 You're like, I'll just pick up this one and that one. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. You know, God's brought me and my wife a long ways over the last several years, and it's all God. It's it's nothing to do with us. We're just trying to, we're just trying to give it, give our stu- give our will and stuff over to Him, and see see how it works. And so far, you know, sometimes it's a fight. You're like, no, God doesn't want me to do that. That's too much, or that's not going to work out, or, but no. And he has patience. He understands. He understands that you get, you still get fearful and you still get hesitant. He understands that. He he made us. He knows who you are. He knows where you're at. It's Amen. it's something farther down in your heart that he knows that that you're wanting to trust him. He he's going to let you maybe even have that thought process of going, are you, is it, are you sure? And then he lets you know, yeah. And then when you and then when it works out, you you have no doubt. That's God. He wants you to. He wants you to make sure you know it's him. But it is. He's a good God. Anybody else? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Assuming that that's why he was shot, he just drove the trigger off. That's how he was shot. He was shot in the back. He was shot in the back. Well, so long as he died, it was a shot. Yeah. 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 Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, he is. Praise the Lord. Yes, that's great. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Well, that's great. See, we get all encouraged. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Encouraging one another, lifting each other up, reassuring each other in God that everything's going to be all right. He's going to take care of us. Praise the Lord. Brother Erickson, God bless you. Praise the Lord. I'm going to talk to you tonight about the Apostle Paul's words to Timothy, that young minister that he had knew was called of God and prepared for a great work in God's kingdom. And I'm telling you this in the offset tonight to tell you that <clears throat> this lesson is for every one of us here tonight. Yeah, I don't want you to feel like, well, I'm not going into the ministry, so I'm going to let this one go on over yonder. No, this is for every one of us. I believe that today God is looking for individuals uh, that God can work through and move on your jobs and your homes and school and so on and so forth. And, uh, and the kingdom of God begins right where we live. And uh, sometimes we think of some edifice, you know, incredible f church program and facility, but long before it ever got there, it started with somebody saying yes to the Lord. Amen. And so when I speak of growth in leadership tonight, I'm really, really, I'm going to try to make sure that you realize I'm talking to you. I'm talking about our young people. I'm talking about our teens and older young, young men back yonder. I, it's for our moms and dads, our grandmas and grandpas. We want, we want you to know tonight that, that God, there has to be a purpose in your life. And the purpose has got to be for God's kingdom. Do you understand? It's not God creating a purpose for you tonight based on your personality. It's not based on your talent. God wants to build a purpose in your life for his kingdom. And so that's where I'm going tonight. I'm, I'm just giving you fair warning ahead of time. Hopefully you'll be able to figure out, uh, and this will make sense. So turn with me tonight to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, beginning with verse 13 and reading through uh, 16. And uh, yeah, would you stand and would you consider this? It should be on our screen here. The Apostle Paul writing, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. 
Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by, presbyt- uh, for, by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the pe- presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Amen. I, I want to talk to you tonight about developing the Christian example. God wants you to be an example to others. That's why he didn't fill you with the Holy Ghost and then kill you. <laughs> if that's all it was, just getting the Holy Ghost, getting baptized, then, then life and, and God's purpose in our life would be much shorter. But the fact of the matter is tonight, God wants us to be examples. He wants our lives to manifest God's greatness. Amen. Amen. And these things I heard tonight are tremendous testimonies. You fill my soul. You encourage me so much. And so I'm going to dive into this. And then I, I, um, my goal is to bring you around and, and talk to you about Chelsea for just a moment tonight. We want God to do great things. Amen. Lord, I pray that you would bless the word. Lord, I pray that the word of God would speak to each of us. Lord, I pray that there would be no distractions, but we would be able to focus our attention on what you're saying to to me and, and to each of us tonight. Lord, I pray that your spirit would guide us, your word would establish us. Lord, your wonderful message would encourage us. I pray that tonight, Lord, great things would happen in this service. For we ask it, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. There is a difference tonight between those who are satisfied to come to church and those who understand they have a necessary role in the church so that it is progressive and and productive. And so my goal tonight is for every one of us to be, amen, that Christian is developing our lives to be all that God wants us to be. I don't want you to say, you know, if I ask you tonight, where are you going to be in five years? I don't want you to say, I don't know. I may have found something better by then. That's not the answer I'm wanting to hear. I want you to be able to say tonight, I, I'm going to be a better Christian than I was today. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to see God's will done in my life. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so I want to just go over a few of these comments, statements that Paul made to Timothy here tonight and just um, maybe give you a brief review of those and uh, bring you around to what I believe is, is the necessary truth to understand this evening. Taking heed to thyself and to the doctrine. There's got to be a continual study in our life. I'm, I'm talking about my attitude tonight. I'm talking about the way I approach God's word in my life. Is it just uh, extra baggage I take with me? Now I've got Jesus and I'm going to pull him behind me like at the airport? Or do we understand tonight that we need to have that word in us? We need that word to consume us tonight, to be the very example of that word of God. Without this continual study, this, this influence of, of God will, will be minimized in my life. If I'm not hungering to know God's word more, then that word automatically will diminish in my life. That's a biblical truth. We don't, we don't just say, I'll pick up in four years and run with it then. The backslider, uh, uh, thank God, the Bible already promises that God is going to open the door for backsliders to come back into the truth, and we're so thankful for that. And they're just as valuable as you or I are. We, we want them to come to the house of God. We want them to live for God. But understand tonight, when they left and they walked away from truth, some things diminished in their life. Now, they're gonna, now, thankfully, God's mercy and grace will allow them to renew. We can be renewed in the Holy Ghost. We can be revived in his word. Amen. God's special divine gift um, is something God gives each of us that when we are willing to be a part of God's kingdom, God's service, God has divine gifts that he places in our minds, in our hearts. 
In other words, um, when we uh, go through our election every year in our district of Oklahoma for the United Pentecostal Church, I'm not telling you everything about that is spiritual, but I'm telling you I think that we have a good procedure that really works. But how it works is this. There are uh, the, the brethren choose someone they think is of good report, upstanding, and will do a good job in that office, whatever it is. And, and if that individual doesn't stand up and say, Elder, I'm sorry, I, I just can't do it right now. I don't feel like God wants me to do that. Then, then ultimately, the, the body of believers will vote on them, and if it's, if it's a majority, they are elected. I was elected as Sunday school director for eight years. Well, um, they got whatever I could offer. You know, I mean, it's, there have been better people come along that did a better job than I did. But, but my point is this, is that when I became the director, I believe that that very night, Brother Martin, our superintendent of Oklahoma, would have all the board members and all the church brethren stand up and, and point our hands toward all those who were elected that day and pray for them that God would endue them with a special anointing that would help them to be able to do the job they were asked to do. So it took their willingness, their availability, but also took God's spirit to anoint them and give them direction. Does that make sense? That happens in the local church. Now, we don't elect you. How many says that Sister Mock ought to, you know, start doing X, Y, Z tonight? <laughs> no, we don't do that. In the local church, we simply are available. We are, we are faithful to God. We're involved in the church. And by virtue of God's will and, and leadership and all those things that happen, uh, we see people move into positions because of their availability, because of their willingness, and then God anoints them for that special task. Praise the Lord. How many believe that? So, so if you ever do a job in this church, I don't care if it's vacuuming in the church. Don't minimize that. We've got to have a clean church for people to come into. Don't, don't minimize mowing the lawn, of taking out the trash, of doing all the things. Thank you. Uh, Brother Jeff picks up our snack chat room a little bit before we all come over to service on Sundays. So I'm going to dump out the coffee and empty the grounds and take out the trash and turn the air conditioner off. Well, if he didn't do it, who would? And our job has got to be, I'm not trying to get out of work tonight. I hope you understand that. But I believe that the apostles knew what they were doing when they, they chose men to take up a position to help in the kingdom of God so that those who were spiritually leading the body could continue in prayer and, and seeking God and, and presenting the word of God in that generation. And so we are trying to say, um, I, I haven't vacuumed the carpet here. Please don't, don't feel bad about that. I have in a few other churches. <laughs> it's not like I've never vacuumed before. But thankfully, you all have carried that role, and I'm so thankful that you do. But my coming around to, you are anointed of God whenever you put your hand into the work of God. Rather it be that little slave girl that could say, oh, that my master could go into Israel and, and, and see the prophet. Because I know he would be healed. Oh. You see, God wants every one of us to be understanding how important it is that you and I play a role in the church. Now, of course, I'm going to, I'm setting you all up for a fall here later, but just don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm forewarning you. <clears throat> when Samson had his hair shorn cut, the story wasn't about Delilah. The story wasn't about how much she was paid. It was about that he, knowing what was required of him, felt like that, that it was something that would grow back and, 
and he wasn't going to miss a day. And, and the Bible said he went out to shake himself like he did in the past. He just thought nothing changed. And we know, of course, he ended up churning and, and grinding out grain in, in that great stone and, and pushing it and, and having his eyes gorged out. Oh, my. The unction of God tonight, what God does is he comes into every human life that is willing to participate, and he will empower you. you that's, that is, takes faith now because we don't see it happening. We don't see an angel come along and tap Scott over the head with a magic wand. We just understand that, that God blesses Scott to play that saxophone. And he blesses him to be willing to fix our mower. And he blesses him to be a board member. And he blesses him, you know, to teach Sunday school. And we're thankful for all, every duty that every one of you do. We're not counting up blessings tonight. I'm saying that every one of us ought to be involved. Thank God for our young men, the Vanderhoff boys, are willing to take up an offering. And Isaac, remembering you of all the times you did also, I don't mean to be... I, that wasn't some kind of a slight toward you. <clears throat> Amen. God wants you and I to be involved. The, the only way that's going to happen tonight is that you make room by keeping the word of God as of greatest and value importance in your life. Because when you want God's word in your life, you will make room for God's word in your life. Amen. Uh, here's what Matthew 9 16 and 17 says, No man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment, and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. It's a, it's a matter of, of attitude tonight. It's a matter of you being able to say, I love truth so much, I want to be involved. I am committed. Amen. The, the idea of, of taking a new piece of cloth and sewing it onto an old skin was, was that that old skin has been old and set in place and it's doing very little give and take anymore because it's so old, it's, it's leathery now, it's hardened. And so that new piece of, of cloth or skin that they sew on is brand new. And so with the heat of the day and the cold of the night and, and the liquid that's inside of that skin, it makes that, that new piece of cloth shrink. And it tears the old skin and ruins it. And the new skin, and it's, it's not valuable. And all, the, and all that good wine flows out onto the ground. And all that work, all those crops, all that harvesting, all that effort was to naught. Because somebody was trying to hold a, a position and do something without the right spirit, without the right thinking that allowed them to be able to put new wine into new bottles. Does that make sense? The Apostle Paul said, watch your life, or in other words, watch yourself, he told Timothy, and the doctrine. You have to realize tonight that when we talk about um, being that available Christian, we are talking about not only honoring that Bible that we have on our coffee table, but now wanting to have that implanted into my spirit, into my lifestyle, into my attitudes. But on top of that, that I have responded in obedience from that word, and I have got a new projective of my life going to be right and upright before God, that I am committed. I, God doesn't have to wonder where I am. We, we have to have people that will follow through. Does that make sense? I don't mean to be critical. I'm not being ugly. Lord knows, what have I missed? Three prayer meetings in this church. And I'm just telling you that just to say that I have made my own mistakes. I didn't do it on prom purpose, I promise. But I was foolish. I didn't have my alarm set. And I, we had it on a Saturday. And I, man, busy on Saturday, went on about my business and never thought of it. <laughs> now, we've got to be 
we've got to be that vessel tonight that is willing to say, I'm, I'm all in. You can count on me. I'm going to be what you want me to be. He said, keep a sharp eye on both of these things. Don't allow, don't allow yourself to lose your priority. Don't allow yourself to get wrapped up in your job or a new promotion or, or your schedule this week. Don't let anything become something that would minimize your relationship with God and maximize those areas in your life that could become carnal. Ultimately, only God can save us. Yet, also the Bible speaks of saving ourselves, of Philippians 2 and 12, and, and James 5, 19 and 20, leaves us an understanding that, that we have the opportunity to make a decision that I will save myself, knowing it's God's grace, it's God's power in my life. Let me go on. I don't mean to bore you all to death. Paul's words to this young man were a constant reminder. Paul knowing that he wouldn't always be there, but the position and the need of Timothy would always be there. And so he had to prepare a young man to be ready to take on responsibility and be what he said he would be. We don't get a position and then, and then make commitments that I'm going to do better so I can fold that position. God wants us actually, to put ourselves... Uh, Jeff, can you put up verse 16 uh, that we had up there? Watch the, watch the chronology of time here. He said, first, take heed to thyself and then unto the doctrine. I thought that was very interesting. God wants us to be able to, to be that vessel. Now, I'm not saying these things to incriminate you or to say that you're not doing like you should. Every one of us has to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We, we, don't, we don't get this and all of a sudden know everything. We have to grow and develop. And so what I'm saying to you tonight is not to say, why aren't you doing better? Don't, mis, don't misread me. I am saying this has got to be the criteria that God uses to measure growth in a church. It's not our facility. It's not how many ministries we have. It's not how many ministers we have. It's not the quality of, of a ministry, a preaching we have. It's not who we know. It's not how many blinded eyes we've seen. None of those things that we like to say, I, I, I saw it. But you have to realize God measures growth in a church by us becoming available and able to put God's word and our walk with God in proper order. Take heed to yourself. See that the life living for the Lord remains that place where God can prosper you. He went on and said to continue in them. It's not a one-time deal. It's, it's a matter of learning a lifestyle of saying, I, I'm going to be a better Christian. How do I do it? Well, I'm, I'm going to set myself a goal. I, I'm going to pray in the morning like I do now. And in the evening before I go to bed, I'm going to, I'm going to give God 10 more minutes. I'm going to praise him and thank him. Well, you're setting yourself goals, but it's still going to have to be God that blesses you. Right? But that's good that you're wanting to improve. Continue in them. Have you ever thought about this? That, that God adds to those who are involved and God takes away from those who are not. What about the one talent guy? Oh, I knew you were a hard taskmaster. And so I took my one talent, I wrapped it in a napkin, and I put it in the ground because I knew one day you were going to require it from me. Yeah, but you never did anything with it. He, he, Jesus said you never put it to even the usury to get your 2.5% right now. God wants us to do something with what he gave us. He wants us to use this 
in order to better because he's expecting to use you to build this church. Did you know that? Won't be the dynamics of the ministry. I just try to keep you all awake. <laughs> See my tie? Watch my tie. <laughs> You see, a growing minister, a growing Christian tonight has to progress and go farther and deeper into God's Word. But the fact of the matter is, we don't get past point A until we step on that stone and do it. And then B and C and D become available to us. We have to realize tonight, God knows what He's doing. But He did this based on my willingness and my availability. Just like the district my wife wasn't there to tell me no. She, she got smarter through the years. Elaine would tell me before I went to district conference, no, practice. She said, practice this with me. No. <laughs> I think all of our wives do that to us. <clears throat> In order for me to be the kind of pastor God wants me to be, I've got to, I want to be a shepherd. I want to be a help to people. I want to have a relationship with God that's growing. I want to be delving in the word of God and growing myself. Because if I don't grow, how do you think I'm ever going to convey truth to you where you can grow? If I'm not fasting and I'm not praying and I'm not putting myself in a position where I'm saying, God, I want more, how on earth can I expect me to all of a sudden say some words over this pulpit that are all of a sudden are going are gonna to be a light switch go off in your heart and you're going to flip it and say, bing, I'm a new Christian. Right. Oh, you see, it's, it's, it's carrying a spirit with this thing, isn't it? It's not just having the word of God. No pastor can lead his people where he has not been himself. And so when I say that, Moms and dads, have you learned that about your kids? How many of you are more effective when you show them that you can do it too? And then they can follow in your footsteps. Versus the old adage, do as I say now and not as I do. Right? That's not effective, is it? Later on, those kids are resentful. Yeah. If a church isn't growing, then it's going backwards according to that principle of talents. We're not, we're not meeting a need. We're not ministering. We come in as sealed houses. In other words, meaning that we come in and just, just leave me alone. Let me get through this church service. Be the Christian I'm supposed to be. And then I'm going home and I'll see you next time I have to see you. That's not what God wants. He wants us to be able to network together. Amen. In, in living and, and teaching and preaching and leading, that becomes the evidence of their spiritual growth. And, and what we must see in the leadership, we want to see also in the lives of every Christian. That's got to be the, the statement, the principle that we work by here, is that we want there to be growth in everyone's life. Y'all doing okay? Am I killing you? I'll, I'll get through this, I promise. When, when Paul said give attendance, he meant to devote yourself. Become absorbed in the word of God, how it, how it infiltrates and works in your life, how it speaks to you. Amen. Um, when, the, when the scripture talks about uh, to be able to be uh, Paul talking about reading the word. He was talking about reading it publicly. And, and the idea is that we need to keep that word of God being publicized in our local church. We almost need to have a, you know, we ought to think about having a, um, 10 verses and every one of us have our chance to come up here and read just so that it challenges us and allows, allows the church to hear the word of God. Maybe that would be a good, a good thing we should do. And then don't forget exhortation. 
It means to encourage. It suggests to apply the word of God in not only your life, but also the way you share with others that the word isn't shared with them also. Paul said you've got to be apt to teach. You've got to be willing to, to invest in people. We don't say these things to say, if you don't do this, you're going to split hell wide open. We don't use the word of God as a club. Boom, boom. I told you. We, we can't force people to do anything. But we can take the word of God and we can, and we can share it with the right spirit. Everything comes back to my attitude, doesn't it? The way I think the word of God is important tonight. And then our spiritual gifts. The Bible said that, that every Christian is given at least one spiritual gift. At least one. Oh, God wants us to, to learn what that is and to apply it in our life. He gave it to you because you may have that only, that one opportunity in this church, you may be the only one with that spiritual gift. And how much better and complete and whole will the church be if all of us are doing what God intended us to do? Amen. And so in, in total tonight, Paul was encouraging a young man not to get wrapped up in sports, not to, not to join the you know, um, Olympics, not to become the very best runner in Rome. Paul took a young man and said, you can be just as committed and just as rewarding and even more so for they receive a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. Paul said, I'm offering you, Timothy, tonight something better than what all of your friends are doing. And that's the part that takes faith tonight for you to realize that you can't see it right now. It's not visible. It's not, God doesn't give you a roadmap into your future. He just says, if you will, I will. If you give yourself, I will fill the needs, the voids in your life. I will give you the words to speak. I will give you the ability to do your job. I will help you to be successful. We, I'm bringing this to a close now. We're, we're in a tough place right now. And let me explain it to you. Our Sunday school program has grown. And really now we need younger and older class. And, and not only that, but the teacher upstairs has got to have two of them at least in that classroom. Because we need to have Number one is just a safety precaution concerning legal issues. By, by all means, that's got to be the major reason. And number two, how much more can that teacher get done if they have someone assisting them? Getting things prepared, lining things out, getting the scissors and the crayons and the, and the tape and everything ready while the teacher is teaching the principle that she's trying to get across. We, we're going to have to I'm not asking you for a commitment tonight, but I want you to think about this. I need right now one teacher that will take the younger kids and that we can start, and that so we can have two classes going. And then I need helpers that would be the second person in each room, both for both classes, because we don't have any standards. Many of you have jumped in and helped, but it's been not based on the schedule, it's just been that you were willing to help because we were in a need. I want to get this to where the teacher and the, and, the, and the helper can talk before the class starts, can talk on the phone, and can make sure they have all their ducks in a row, and they can give these young people the most incredible class each and every Sunday. And we're this far away from that. We have great young people. We have plenty of room. If you need, I can put a classroom down here. So 
Some of you don't want to climb those stairs, and Lord knows those stairs are obnoxious. My wife tries to drag me up those stairs. <laughs> She's going up and down those stairs as her exercise, and I'm thinking, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The Satan. Sorry, John. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm joking. But, I, but to be honest, we need to be able to say that we have, wouldn't it be awesome to have four people, helpers for each class, to be able to say that you only have to do it one time a month. And so you're not doing it every week. We, we've made Snack Chat a lot of fun, and it's valuable. And I, I, I don't want you all not being there. But I understand that we've got to come up with a plan where we can have helpers. Um, if we can at least have two teachers that will commit themselves to be there every Sunday, and then we eventually we can look at subbing them out and putting two others in later. But wouldn't it be awesome to be able to have two people in each of our classes? Wouldn't it be awesome to have two classes where we could have our older young people uh, with, a, with a message more directed to their age? And our children, our young kids, could also have a message that would help them. And so we really are there. We're, we, um, there's no sense in talking about leadership training and programs. What we need to do is we need to do a good job with our, our time on Sunday mornings because we can develop these young people. We, those teachers, can start to show them how that having the Holy Ghost in their life is important. We can start showing them how that they can grow and um, our, our adults have done such a great job in Snack Chat over here. I may uh, jump over there once in a while and jump in because I, I want our young people to be successful. But so I'm, I'm putting me, I've joked around with you, I've smiled and said some funny things tonight, but my goal is for you to realize I'm really looking for somebody that will, several somebodies that will say, I am willing to give a little bit of my time. And that would be able to say uh, that, that I'll be there, you can count on me. And, and if ever I was so sick I couldn't come, I will, I will make sure that I have communicated that and we have someone else taking care of the class. But my goal is not to have a schedule so that people can switch all the time. It would be nice to be able to get to where we can say, you know, uh, Sister So-and-So knows that every third Sunday they are, they are going to help in, in children's class. And then, and then we need to get some of our ministers up there and maybe once a quarter have children's church and, and have church up there. Why not? So to me, these things are obvious. Was I Sunday school director for eight years? Yes, I was. Was I motivated to see kids get the Holy Ghost? Absolutely. But I, in our local church here, we just, no one wants to miss, and I understand that. But I'm hoping that, I've actually got two pieces of paper I'm going to put on in the foyer, and, and no, no pressure. If you, if you don't feel like you can do it, I'm, I'm not asking you to put your name down and then not show up. I need, I need some people that are willing to say, I'll help make this happen. And um, if you want to put your name down more than once, and, and do it twice a month or whatever. That's up to you. But, but I just need some help in this. Do you all understand that? I'm not, I'm not putting you under the gun. I'm just saying I want you to think about it. Um, Elaine will put these papers out on the foyer, and they'll be here for the next several weeks, and I'm just going to plan on you being able to, at your leisure, and think about it, pray about it, and um, if you could help. When you're an assistant and when you're a help, uh, the teacher will already have the class orchestrated. If you if you're want to become a teacher, but you're afraid of not being able to have curriculum every day, we'll get you curriculum. I, I, I will take care of that. Uh, Benita Church actually gave us a bunch here a while back, and uh, we need to go through some of that. You know, a lot of what we have in the upstairs now is really archaic, <laughs> pretty old curriculum. But we'll, if we need to buy new, we'll do it. We just got to get ourselves where we have got a quality program going on because that's where we're going to see change in our young people. Amen.
I want to see those young people lift up their hands and worship God in church. But they won't do it until they do it in Sunday school. They won't do it until they see their peers doing it. Right? And, and so uh, that training for young people is so important in a church. And um, we're hoping for the great things to happen this year. Would you stand with me? I, tonight I've really killed you and I, I apologize. I want you to see that Paul took great care with Timothy to make sure that he understood that these different things that he asked Timothy was a step beyond the norm. Not just go to church, but Timothy, I want you to study. I want you to get yourself. I want you to find out what these terms mean. I want, I want you to think about what God is doing in your life. And little by little, that young man became a great minister. In the point that Paul gave Timothy the authority to go out and find other t leaders and, and ask them to become a part of the church. That's, that's giving someone a lot, of, a lot of power. Amen. So, Lord, teach me. Help me to be available. Help me to be willing for the good of what you're doing. I don't want to, I don't want to miss snack chat, but Lord, maybe I could give one week a month and that if it would help with others, we could all join together and we could see good things happen in the kingdom of God. Amen. Would you reach out to the Lord tonight? Lord Jesus, thank you. Lord, I'm sorry this wasn't very exciting. Lord, I pray that your word is precious. Your word is exciting. The zeal of the Lord brings things to pass in our lives. A made-up mind to see God's will accomplished is powerful in our life tonight. Lord, I pray that you would touch every life here, young and old. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be all that we can be. Lord, let us see growth in our life, and we see growth in those that we touch in the church and the work of God. Lord, I pray tonight that you would bless in a mighty way. Bless Chelsea Pentecost Church. Bless this group of people. Let us grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Help us to become more and more steadfast, more unmovable, more established in the doctrine. Lord, let us be lovers of God and haters of sin. Lord, I pray tonight that you would bless. For Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Devote yourself to the Lord first. And then let him put that thought into your heart. And he will bless you. He will enable you. He will make a way for you. He's going to bless you. And you're going to be in, excited about what you're doing in the work of God. Amen. God doesn't want this to be hardship on you. He wants it to be a new door of opportunity where you can be blessed. Amen. Let's sing this chorus, Sister Susie. I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord, or mountain, or plain, or sea. I'll say what you want me to say, dear Lord. I'll be what you want me to be. One more time. Praise the Lord. Would you love the Lord before we leave? Lord, I love you, Father. said was true, and I know that God wants us to have that right spirit. Amen.
Amen. There's just more favorite topics to talk about.